You might not expect to find a tea plantation in Europe, but there is actually one off the coast of Portugal, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The tropical climate and volcanic soil make for perfect growing conditions, giving this tea a sweet, perfectly balanced mineral flavor. We're in São Miguel, the biggest island here in the Azores and the home of tea. On this island alone, in the 19th century, there used to be six tea manufacturers, but now there are only two left. The biggest and the oldest is Goreana, which we're going to visit today. It's 138 years old and they still make tea following the methods of the past. Goreana makes both black and green tea. For black tea, depending on which leaf it comes from, the tea is given a different grading. Orange pico, pico, or broken leaf. This is a strong tea, pico. Orange pico, more aromatic. And this is broken leaf, very light tea. If you, you can touch and you can feel the ideas. Yeah, this is a bit rougher. So why is it that this plant grows so well here in the Azores and not you know, anywhere else in Europe? <laughs> because it needs water, not too much sun, fog. And the, because it rains a lot, the land is acid. So our tea is different from other teas by the taste. It's very balanced, not strong. And the green tea doesn't have a fishy taste on the end. So this is the perfect place to have tea. The tea plant is not native to the Azores. It was brought here over two centuries ago, as islanders were in need of a new crop after a fungal disease wiped out San Miguel's main source of trade at the time, oranges. They were not disappointed. The Camellia sinensis couldn't have found more fertile soils than these. And here, the plants don't die because it rains a lot when a plant is old, more or less 90 anos, 90 anos in 90 years old, there's another one that comes. Okay, so you have never... always to take off plants. The harvest lasts six months, from spring to fall, until the leaves become too strong to make a good tea. In order to move around freely, harvesters first have to cut the sides of the plant. Then they use a machine that cuts only the very first leaves. The leaves may be small, but harvesting them is not a live job at all. The same way water plays an important role in the growth of the plant, it makes life difficult for the harvesters when they have to bring the leaves indoors. A bag of wet leaves like this weighs around 15 kilos, and there are hundreds to move a day. Goreana is set on three floors, which conveniently follow the transformation from fresh leaf to tea leaf. On the first floor, there is a wilting room. It's a warm room where the leaves stay for 12 hours to let the water evaporate and the leaves soften. So how many leaves do you like collect on average? To make one kilo, you need five kilos of leaves. So we, we make 45 tons a year. Black tea and green tea come from the same plant. What is different is the making process. To make black tea, leaves fall in this cylinder to be rolled on the ground floor of the factory. Rolling releases the juices of the leaves. The step that follows is oxidation, which happens in the basement of the factory. Leaves reach it by going through this other machine with a net. The net has different sized holes to start dividing leaves into the three grades of black tea. It's what Madalena was telling me here, but the noise from the rolling machines was so loud that our microphones didn't really catch much of it. Listen for yourself. The sound was a bit better downstairs in the oxidation room. Madalena explained to me that oxidation is a natural process that occurs after the leaves are exposed to the air. This contributes to the aroma of the tea. What the machines did uh, help was this movement okay. for roll the leaves and for the juice come out to stay black for the oxidation process. In two hours is black. My ends are starting to be black. Okay. So oxidation is not something you do, it's just when you yeah. extract the juice. If I was trying to make green tea, it doesn't come here. Because we don't need oxidate, we have to stop the oxidation. Okay. okay, so the leaves are like constantly separated. Yes. Always, because it's orthodox way. Orthodox way, you are always separating the leaves. It's more expensive to make orthodox way. And here, the, this one is the bigger one. Okay. The ones that stay inside are not good. The tea leaves will be separated another three times during the drying process, by size and by weight by machines, and by hand and human eye as a final check. But we'll have to wait a couple of hours for the oxidation to happen. So how about we talk about green tea for a minute? 
Madalena tells me that, unlike black tea, green tea is only made at the end of summer, where the sun has hardened the leaves. The process is similar, but the big difference is that after spending 12 hours in the wilting room, the leaves go through a steaming process before being rolled. We, we close the, the machine and stays here for five, four or five minutes, and the oxidation process is stopped because we don't want to oxidate the tea. All right. In, and then goes roll and dry. So, and then what is the difference, I mean, in taste between, between the two teas? Green tea, it's more he uh, healthy because they have more antioxidants. And black tea, I said, is for salt. Black tea, it's more tasty, more, have more balance. My father always tell me that the best tea in the world is the tea that the one that you drink with your grandmother, it's the one that's you going remember. to remember. <laughs> so how about you? Because your grandmother used to actually work here. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> which one would you drink? We drink uh, Piku because I like very strong teas. Rolling, sorting, steaming, the machines are the true wonder of this factory. At Goriana, very little has changed since the 19th century. And these are like the original machines. Yes, the original. Koreana, so they've never changed. Because uh, uh, the tea of machine didn't, didn't grow. Maybe now the, the material it's different, but the movements, the, the way of making tea is the same. This is from the revolution, the industrial revolution. They are made to uh, life all the world. Uh, the, the energy. It's for, from 1920. It's the first energy in the world called continuous. Another great feature of the Goriana factory is that it is powered entirely by water. The system was installed by Madalena's grandfather and uses a stream flowing through the factory's estate. Not paying for power is the main reason why Goriana has stood the test of time against other tea manufacturers on the island and why the company can afford the 72 employees who work in the factory today. Many people come here not to see the tea, but to see the energy because they are electronic engineers and they come to a world that no more exists, but exists in Goriana. Let's go back to our black tea. We left off at the oxidation process, which is now over. The next phase is drying and then separating the leaves. They are first separated by size in this roller and then by weight in this wooden machine. After the, the, the dry, one that rolls and then the second one that rolls again and separates by size and then goes by weight, more cellulosic, less cellulosic, in a machine made of wood that is the oldest one in the tea factory. Okay, so the leaves that have more cellulose, they are... They go less. out. The machines may never stop working, but the final check is always left to a human eye, to Carla and her colleagues. Uh, here we are taking out the stamps. This is the black tea, okay. the pico, the strongest tea. Here you could see the brown. It's different because it's brown. The lighter ones, the leaves are more black. And these are the only ones you need, right? The yes. Leaves. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, 22 years. OK, so yeah, you know by eye. Yes. That's why it's so fast for you. <laughs> So here we are, with what normally would be a beautiful view on the sea. The sea, but you can see a little bit of blue on mm. the corner. Okay, yeah, <laughs> maybe. But this is actually the best weather it's to make tea. For so tea. let's see if it's the best weather to also taste. This is the, the strong one. This is the one you like. You can make a ching ching. Okay. That's good, so, and you actually don't put anything in tea. No, so you just no drink sugar. it right Yeah, That's the way I like it. <laughs> it is a bit acidic. Yeah. No? If it was an orange pico, more flavor. Yes. This one, it's more strong. Yeah, no, it is more strong. More aggressive. But it's still pretty, pretty balanced. Yes, it's balanced. The English call our tea fresh. So this one is like aggressive for like the variety yes. of um, for the no because of, of our yeah. land, our plant change and adapt to the weather because here we have sea all over the place. Yeah, that's true. We cannot go to a place and don't have the wind of the sea because we are a very little island. <laughs> the biggest island here in the Azores, here and the <laughs> leaving the rest of the leaves behind. <laughs> a cup of tea. 
leaving the rest of the uh, sorry. the oldest and the biggest is Goreana. They're 30 years 